we're going to begin this morning with meditation in prayer. During meditation, let us examine our life by way of 1 John 1 and 9, confessing all known sins privately to God the Father, assuring that you are in fellowship, ready to worship God with a pure heart. God is a God of order, and everything we do in worshiping him must be in order. So in preparation of getting in order to worship God, let us meditate solely on the purpose of why we're here, to thank God for the blessings and the things he's done throughout this week, allowing us to come and worship him. Let us pray. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. We come this morning with our heads bowed to thank you for giving us another opportunity to assemble in obedience to your word, which teaches us forsake not the assembly of ourselves. But we have assembled today to worship you, the Heavenly Father, with a thankful heart for the things that you've done and given us a reasonable portion of our health and strength. You've watched over us and protected us throughout this week. And Father, we thank you. And as we lift up our voices to sing praises unto your holy name, we ask, dear God, for your anointing and blessing upon each individual worship service that it will be holy and acceptable in your eyesight. And we thank you, Father, for another opportunity to commemorate what your son did. He went to the cross to satisfy your righteousness. And at the right time in history, your righteousness was satisfied through Christ's willingness and obedience to die as a substitute for us. And today we commemorate what he's done by participating in the communion elements. We thank you. We pray, Father, that you would bless us. We ask in Christ's name is our prayer. Amen. Will the congregation please repeat after me? Man shall not live by bread alone. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. All scriptures given by inspiration of God. All It's profitable for doctrine. For reproof for correction. For instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Steady to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. The word of truth this morning is going to come from a number of passages of scripture. And the subject of our lesson, and please repeat after me, turn ye, turn ye, from your evil ways. Amen. And we are going to come out of the book of Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter. We're going to look at verses 10 and 11. So if everyone want to have your Bibles, uh, open your Bibles up to Ezekiel 33. And we're going to see what the Holy Spirit has to say. Ezekiel, uh, the 33rd chapter, verses 10 and 11. All right. Are we all there? Uh, 
Let us read. Therefore, read. Speak unto the house of Israel. Thus ye speak, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and pine away in them, how should we then live? Say unto them, As I live, said the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O Israel? In other words, God is asking a question. Why are you going to perish? You have an opportunity to live, he's saying. Why must you perish? God said, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. God don't have pleasure in the death of the wicked or those that uh, make it a life's choice to reject Christ. Amen. They have a free choice. And their free choice determines their fate. Everyone has that free choice. Now, it is the pastor's duty to sound the alarm that Satan stack lies in people's minds. How does he do it? By the thought, uh, look, you do what's right. And I've heard many people say that. I live, try to live right. I'm not a bad person. Satan gets you to thinking it's okay every now and then to get off on the wild side. After all, I'm young, I'm beautiful, I have needs, amen. And most of all, the Lord knows your heart. Y'all ever hear that? A little voice in your head say, the Lord knows your heart, amen. See, that's straight from hell itself. And you didn't realize it. Satan has put that thought in your mind, the Lord. Yeah, the Lord knows your heart. Amen. But this is why God has put a uh, choice between you to decide on to accept his plan or reject his plan. God say, not so. Here in Ezekiel 12 through 20, we're in the same chapter. We're going to look at Ezekiel 12 through 20. We're going to continue to read. See, a lot of folks get caught up into this. Let us read verse 12. Therefore read, therefore thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteousness be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinned. Stop right there. See, some folks think, okay, you know, I, 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 I'm doing pretty good. I go to church. Been studying the word of God. I'm Bible study. God wouldn't mind if I get off on the wild side. Every now and then, after all, after all, he knows my heart. Amen. He know I love him. Amen. Let's move on. Verse 13. Let us read. When I shall read, when I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live if he trusts to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, and all his righteousness shall not be remembered. Stop right there. Didn't you hear what the Lord just said? He said that all your righteousness, see, in other words, your righteousness is not going to save you if you choose to go the opposite direction. Amen. Just because you was doing what's right for, for, for 15 years, and you make a choice in that 16th year to go left, amen, that's not going to save you. Satan has all have went so far to stack the lie in people's mind that, you know, my grandmother went to church. My mother went to church. And my granddaddy and my daddy was all in church thinking that they are all right. 
because your parents and your grandparents went to church. You think that's all right with you? No, no. Not so, the Lord say. Uh-uh. Everybody got to stand before the judgment seat of Christ for themselves. Amen. 14, let us read. Again, read. Again, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die if he turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right. If the wicked restore the plague, give again that he had robbed, walked in the statutes of life. Without committing iniquity, he shall surely live. He shall not die. None of his sins that he have committed shall be mentioned unto him. He have done that which is lawfully right. He shall surely live. Yet the children of thy people say, The way of the Lord is not equal. But as for them, their way is not equal. When the righteous turneth from his righteousness and committed iniquity, he shall even die thereby. But if the wicked turneth from his wickedness and do that which is lawfully right, he shall surely thereby. Yet he say, The way of the Lord is not equal. O oh, ye house of Israel, I will judge you every one after his ways. Amen. So now God said, if you wicked and you turn, you'll live. But if you're righteous and you go wicked, you're going to die. Amen. In other words, all that you have done in the past will be canceled out. All that right, amen, will be canceled out. But now the wickedness, if he make a choice, and start doing what's right, God say, he'll live. He'll live. So now, God's word means exactly what it say. When it comes to the judgment seat of Christ, there is no excuse known to man is going to stand. Amen. No excuses at the judgment seat of Christ. Go to Romans 8, 14, 8 through 12. Book of Romans. Let's see what the Holy Spirit has left there in the book of Romans for us to benefit from. Romans 14. When it comes to the judgment seat of Christ, and all of us is going to have to go to the judgment seat of Christ. All of us must go. You got one shot at this thing. Because once it's over, it's over. Here, chapter 14, verse 8. Let's read. For whether we live, read. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. But why dost thou judge thy brother? And why dost thou set at naught thy brother? The seed of Christ. For it is written, As I live, said the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Underline to himself. See, you can't give an account for mother. Mother can't give an account for you. Grandmother can't give an account for you. You got to give an account for yourself. Amen. Each of us is accountable to Christ alone. Each of us. And we should never compromise. And this is where a lot of Christians get in compromising positions of lying. A lot of Christians get in a compromising position of fornicating, adultery, homosexuality, lesbianism, murder, theft. At no time we should give any of these equal standards with Bible doctrine. See, many times we base our moral judgments on opinions personal dislikes 
and culture biases rather than on the word of God. See, and that's the problem. We be going on what we think is right. And God has already told us in his word, never rely on what you think is right. Just simply go on his word. God is the creator. He knows. We don't know. So why do we want to make ourselves equal to God himself? Amen. Or what we think is right. Or is our opinion. Or this is what I think. Let's throw out what you think. Let's throw your opinion out. Let's go on what God say. What did God say? He's the creator. He knows. We don't know. People not understanding doctrine. That's the problem. Because they're not under the right pastor to teach them. Just because you go to church and you hear the preacher, is he teaching you? Is he feeding your soul with God's say? Is he feeding you with God's say? And this is one of the things that Jesus looked at Peter and said, Peter, do you love me? He asked him three times. And each time Peter said, yeah. And Christ came back and said, feed my sheep, my word. Equip them. So now, if the, is the pastor that you're under, is he equipping you so that you can start walking right before God? If he is, then that's the man that's after God's own heart. His objective is to teach you so that you can walk right before him and get your life in order. That's his job. That's his duty to let you know when Satan is, is, is in the midst and how he manipulates our minds. Many Christians don't understand because they haven't been taught that we are going to be judged by our actions, our words, and our thoughts. We're not even free to think what we want to think as Christians. Amen. And this is why Satan whole objective is to get control of the soul. Amen. But your volition, God has given you free will choice to make a decision to choose what's going to control either the Holy Spirit or that sin nature. So now we're going to be judged by our actions and we got some references to look at here. Ecclesiastes 11.9 then we're going to go to 2 Corinthians 5, and then Revelations 20, 13. Turn over to Ecclesiastics. The book of Solomon. Solomon has put a lot of wisdom here, also in the book of Proverbs. But in Ecclesiastics, 11th chapter, let's see what the Holy Spirit has to say through Solomon. All right, here in verse 9 of chapter 11, follow along with me, it says, Rejoice, O young man. This is Solomon saying here, in thy youth. He said, now, take heed, rejoice. See that? Satan said, have your fun while you're young. Because when you get old, you can't have no fun no more. That's what Satan said. But the Holy Spirit, through Solomon, said, go ahead. Rejoice in your youth, and let the heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thy heart, and in the sight of thy eyes. But then he goes on to say, but know this, that in all these things, God would bring thee into judgment. Know this. If that's what you want to do, go ahead. But know this. Your actions is going to determine your judgment. We have another reference in 2 Corinthians 5.10, a very familiar passage of Scripture, turn to it. Let's see what the Holy Spirit is saying there. 2 Corinthians 5th chapter. 
verse 10. It says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done, actions in his body. According to that he have done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. So, your actions speak louder. Amen. Another reference, 2013 of the book of Revelations. Turn to it. A little bit more information there. And the sea gave up the dead, wherewith in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they will judge every man according to their works. According to their works. So now, actions, we are judged according to our works. What are you doing for the Lord? What are you doing? Jesus said, carry on until I return. Occupy until I return. That means be about your task as an ambassador for Christ. Now what is it an ambassador to Christ represents? He represents Christ in his life. But Christ has all, all, always gave, all, have also gave us a commission to teach, to instruct those in the way of the Lord. So how many people have you brought to Christ? That's the question that I like to ask for you to ask yourself. How many people have you brought to Christ? How many people have you helped find salvation in their life? We're going to be a judge according to our works. So how many of have you? Take an evaluation. Be about God's business. When Jesus Christ was 12 years old and he went about his father's business, that's what he told his mother. I must be about my father's business. Well, guess what? You must be about your father's business. He said, occupy till I come. Occupy till I come. What are you going to tell Christ at the judgment seat of Christ? Well, Lord, you gave me these gifts. You gave me these talents. And I'm going to give them back to you. And he's going to look at you and say, get out of my sight. That slothful, lazy servant. Amen. I gave these things for you to use on my behalf. What have you done? Or are you sitting on your talents? Or are you sitting on your gifts? Or better yet, do you know what your talents and gifts are? If you do not know what they are, all you got to do is ask God to show them to you, to reveal them. And he'll do it. But I question, once he show them to you, what are you going to do? Sit on them? Or be about your father's business? Now, this is 2015. God has given you another opportunity this year to start using what he's given you for him. Amen? God has given you another year. Don't let December come back of 2015 and you haven't talked to anybody, to anybody about Christ or brought anybody to Christ. Amen? Help anybody get an understanding of the plan of God. Okay, 2014 is gone. 2013 is gone. This is a new year. Take it upon yourself to occupy until Christ returns. Get about God's business. Amen. A lot of Christians, a lot of people you know that's walking in their evil ways, 
you have an opportunity to help them to see the light. Now, God say, whosoever will, let him come. He that has an ear, let him hear. So now, the people that you come in contact with, amen, if they have an ear, talk to them about Christ. First of all, you got to come and learn the plan of God so you'll be able to teach them and show them. And even if you can't at this point, invite them to come out to church. Amen. Invite them to come out to church. Everybody you come in contact with. Look, I can't teach you right now because I'm still learning myself. But listen, why don't you come on and learn? Come on and grow. Come on and grow. Amen. See, they'll be quick to go with you and meet you uh, at a club. Amen. But how many of those friends that was quick to meet you at the club will be quick to meet you at church? Amen. Not many. But encourage them. Encourage them. Look, we was once walking in the way of Satan. Listen, let's start walking in the way of Christ now. God has given us another opportunity. So now we're going to be judged by our actions, by our works. He just tells us right here. I'm going to judge you according to your works, your actions. So now I encourage you this day for 2015 to be about in actions, amen, what you have been commissioned to do, amen? Amen. All right. Also, we can be hung by the tongue, amen. Amen. We can be hung by the tongue. We can hang our own selves by what we say. We will be judged by our own words. So we have to be careful what we say. And we have some references here in Matthew, in the book of Jude. Go to Matthew 12. Let's see what Christ has spoken here uh, through the Holy Spirit. 12th chapter. And we're going to look at verses 36 and 37. Be careful what you say. This is why it's so important that we take God's word and let him become a part of us. So when we speak, we're speaking doctrine. We're speaking truth. But when you got all that the shenanigans and who shot John going on inside your head, you're subject to come up start lying. Verse 36, let us read. But I say unto you, read. But I say unto you that every idle word and man shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be what? Condemned. It's by your own words. Got to be careful what you say. See, many Christians haven't been taught this. Many believers haven't been taught this by their uh, pastors that they're sitting under. Amen. See, the pastor's job, that's his duty, to teach you. Be careful with your speech. Be careful with your communication because guess what? God is watching you. The good angels are watching you. Those bad angels are watching you. We are on center stage and we are being watched every second, every breath we take. So I encourage you for 2015, let your words be few. And whatever few words that you do, let them be about Christ. Bringing somebody to the Lord. Amen? Amen. And we got another reference in Jude. First chapter 15. Well, there's only one chapter in Jude. Amen. Amen. Jude 15 and 16. That's the book right before Revelation. Go to Revelation and turn one page back and you'll get Jew. All right, 15 and 16. Let us read. To execute judgment, read. Upon all and to convince all that the ungodly among them 
of all that ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, after their own mind, speaking great swelling words at men's person and admiration because of advantage. Amen. So when you be careful what you say, if you but have had a habit of complaining, 2015, don't do it. If you have a habit of murmuring about things, 2015, break yourself of that. Amen. If you have a habit of lying, break yourself of that. Say, I'm not going to do this because of Christ. Amen. Because my words can hang me. All right. So it's important. Also, we're not even free to think what we want to think. See, Satan has put thoughts in folks' mind that I can dream about certain things since I can't really participate in certain things. At least I can dream about it. Let me tell you something. When you start out at night thinking about some sinful thing, you're not dreaming. That's not dreaming. See, Satan will tell you it's a dream, but no, that ain't dreaming. Go to Ecclesiastics. Let's go back. See, we will be judged by those sinful thoughts, especially when we get ready to lay down at night and go to sleep. <laughs> Amen. Dreaming about Willie D. <laughs> Amen. See, Willie D thoughts will get you in, my, in trouble. The thoughts of Willie D will get you in trouble. The thoughts of Little Sugar will get you in trouble. <laughs> Amen. All right. Chapter 12, verse 14. Let us read, for God shall, what? For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing. Stop right there. Underline that word secret thing. Every secret thing, those thoughts that nobody knows but just you and God. God shall bring every work, action, underline work, action into judgment with every secret thing, every thought, whether it be good or whether it be evil. You will be judged by those evil thoughts, those sinful thoughts. Amen. We will be judged by that. So in 2015, we're going to do better. Is that right? Amen. I don't hear no amen. 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 All right. Our next reference on that is 1 Corinthians 4 5. 1 Corinthians 4 5. All right. Thoughts. Therefore, judge, read. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and make manifest the counsel of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. Amen. God say, I'm going to bring forth the counsel of the hearts, the mind, those hidden things of darkness. Amen. Thoughts of the mind that's, that's sinful. God is going to bring forth. So we're not even free to think as a Christian what we want to think. Amen. See, they put a song out back out there in the day. I can dream about you. I don't know who put that out. I forget who it was. <laughs> <laughs> it 
Amen. No, no. That's straight from hell itself. Getting your mind geared up to these thoughts that God is going to. See, Satan never tell you you're going to be judged by those thoughts. Satan, Satan is not going to tell you that. Uh, uh No. He's not going to tell you that. That's the pastor's job to tell you that. That's his duty to let you know. Be careful what you think. Amen? Be careful in your actions. Let your actions be about God's word. Let the words that you speak speak absolute truth, Bible doctrine. And you can speak Bible doctrine in everything in life. Amen. In everything in life. For all those who turn and change for the love of Christ's sake, by denying themselves in this life will be rewarded. God said, I got a special reward for you. If you turn from your evil ways and start walking right, God say, I got a blessing for you. Go to Matthew 19. We're going to look at Matthew 19, and then we're going to end in 2 Timothy. God say, I got a special blessing for you. Do you want this blessing? You know, I say, don't worry about the blessing. Just do it based on the love of God. And God will take care of the rest. Don't even focus on the blessing. Focus on obedience. Just obey because you love God so much that you're going to do what he say do. He said, go out in my vineyard and work, and whatever's right, I'll pay. So now don't even worry about all of that. God said, I'll take care of that, but just go out and just do it based on the love that you have for him. So here in Matthew, the 19th chapter, we're going to look at verses 27 through 30. Let us read. Then answered Peter, read. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have thereof? Stop right there. That was a legitimate question Peter had. Peter asked the question, look here, now I've forsaken all to follow you. What's in it for me? And Jesus answered unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the generation when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye shall sit upon the twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Now that's not for us. That was for the disciples. That was in his generation. But now notice what verse 29 says. And everyone that have forsaken houses and brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. In other words, you have given up this life for the sake of Christ. Amen. Because you love him so much. Amen. God say, I'm on, I got something for you. Because you made a conscious choice to live for me in 2015. You made a conscious choice to give your life fully to me and deny all of those impulses of the body. All of those impulses of the mind, you have denied those things for my sake. God said that you have sacrificed that for me. Amen. You've sacrificed all of that for me. He said, because you didn't did that, look here, don't worry about it. What's 60, 70, 80 years, 90 years compared to eternity? Huh? What is 100 years compared to eternity? Huh? You can't compare 120 years compared to eternity. Let's say that you lived 120. Can you compare that to eternity? You can't. So now sacrifice. Go to Romans 12. Right quick. Sacrifice your life 
for the Lord. God say, if you do this, you're doing it because you love me. Don't do it because you're looking for something in return. Do it based on the love that you have for me. He said, I beseech you, verse 12, chapter 12, verse 1 says, Therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. See, we are alive. Amen. And you have sacrificed that sinfulness, those sinful thoughts that the body naturally wants to do, the craving that you want to get involved in. You have sacrificed that for my sake. God said, I got something for you. I got something for you. Holy and acceptable unto God. Homosexuality is not holy and acceptable unto God. Lesbianism is not holy and acceptable unto God. All of those sinful lifestyles are not holy and acceptable, but if you sacrifice that for me, God say, I got something for you. See, that's your test. Amen. Can you deny yourself? He said, if you're going to follow me, you must deny yourself. Amen. Amen. And our last reference is in 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy, fourth chapter. Second Timothy, the fourth chapter. We're going to look at seven and eight. See, if you sacrifice your whole life. You'll be able to say with a reasonable assurance here in verse 7, I have fought a good fight. Amen. I have finished my course and I have kept the faith. Underline kept the faith. What is he talking about? I have guarded Bible doctrine in my soul. I have reached spiritual maturity. I have sacrificed. Did not Jesus Christ sacrifice his life for you? Hmm? Did he not do that? <clears throat> Christ went to the cross as a sacrifice and substitute for us. Now, do you love God enough to sacrifice your life for him? For his sake? This is a question that every child of God needs to ask themselves. Are you willing to sacrifice your life for Christ? If you do that, then you can say, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. And then he goes on to say in verse 8, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Because I have done a right thing in the right way at the right time and with the right motive in every aspect of my life. I live my life by that. Can you make that yours? Amen. If you do, you got a crown of righteousness. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at the day. And not to me only, this is Paul saying, but unto all them that also love his appearing. So that I encourage you for 2015 to turn ye from your evil ways. Amen. Amen. Because God is seeing you and he's watching you and he knows your every thoughts. Turn your evil thoughts to righteousness. Turn your evil actions to righteousness. Amen. And turn your evil words to righteousness. God say, if you do that, I got a crown waiting for you. A crown of righteousness. Amen. 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 With our heads bowed, Father, we thank you for giving us this wonderful opportunity this morning to have fellowship in your word. Father God, we need your help to be able to walk right before you. We need your help, dear Heavenly Father. We can't do this alone. 
because Satan is constantly trying to trip us up and to put stumbling blocks before us. Well, Father, we need your help to stay focused on your word so that we can overcome these stumbling blocks, so we can overcome our weaknesses that we have and these bad habits that's not pleasing in your eyesight. We need your help to overcome these things, Father. And we ask you for your help. For we ask it in Christ's name. It's our prayer. Amen. And now we're going to prepare our hearts for communion. Communion is a test of concentration of commemorating what Jesus Christ went to the cross for. He paid the price for us. He satisfied God's righteousness with the righteousness of God demand the justice of God execute. The righteousness of God demanded punishment for sin of the world. And the justice of God executed by metering it out to Jesus Christ at the right time in human history so that each one of us afterwards could have a right to the tree of life, can come boldly to the throne of grace and to accept him with a free heart. This is your last opportunity to make sure that you get in fellowship before partaking in the communion elements. But Psalm 66, 18 teaches us if we regard iniquity in our heart, God would not hear our prayer. Let us take this opportunity right now to search your heart and your mind right now to name all known sins privately to God the Father. Let us pray. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, we thank you for giving us another opportunity to commemorate what your son has done, who went to the cross, 